Alright, welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back to Ironclad RC. Today is the second part of our fiberglass RC boat mold making process. Uh, the last video, we actually pulled the bottom side of the boat. And today, we're going to pull the top side of the boat. So, uh, stick around. Stick around. Don't blink. Don't blink. Big B here with Ironclad RC. In, in this video, we don't really need to set the boat in the base. We need to set the boat in the mold we made all right that way our top side will match the bottom side perfect the curvature and everything so uh so we need to secure the the mold onto our base and then temporarily secure the boat into the mold all right before we before i do all of that i've got to close off the hatch area this is where our hatch will go so we're actually going to close off the hatch area with this piece of plywood all right just going to kind of put put it in the boat i've made this little jig to screw into it and we're going to glue it in the hatch area so when we put our fiberglass mat in the boat the mat won't sag so we're going to work on that part now and then we're going to start securing the the mold and the plug onto our base all right solid I used um, like caulk to kind of glue it in place hopefully it holds up it's not really in a it's adhesive but I just kind of went around it and made a nice clean rounded transition there so our our resin don't get behind it and it has a round transition so to pull out the mold basically um, when you're making your boat you want to make sure your your edges are uh, at an angle to where the mold will pull off if you have like a negative angle then it then the mold's not going to release so make sure all your edges are straight up and down or at an angle you know in so while that's curing out i'm going to start prepping up the mold the bottom part of the mold so what you do is you take like a 5 8 bit and drill into into your mold all right and what that's gonna do see that see that right there I didn't go all the way in maybe go in about four or five millimeters what, what that's gonna do is basically give you something to line your two molds up when you when you're done um, drill them all the way around it and resin will seep down in that little little valley where the hole is and it'll give you like a notch on the on the top side of the mold so when you put the top side of your mold together you'll have these little spots here to line your boat up when you go to to glue it together I got the mold set into my my base the base in this part is really just to kind of hold the mold uh, so it don't move around on you nothing fancy you know I didn't want to screw the mold all the way down because my base is kind of warped from pulling it the the first mold off so I really didn't like uh, correct anything you know I just put the screws in there so it just holds it in place you see what I'm saying I'm gonna use a glue stick 
Now, this isn't a good glue stick, and that's the reason I'm using it. Some, you ever noticed, like, some glue sticks stick better than others? Well, this is one that doesn't stick that well. And what I'm going to do is kind of heat it up with my blowtorch, lift my, my plug out of the mold, put a little bit of hot glue on the back, and I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on the front. Uh, the nice thing about hot glue is it sets up and cures out like instantly also you can use alcohol to rub the glue off of the the mold and your your plug all right so now we got the boat glued into the mold i've actually added a couple more supports on this to get a nice tight uh, fit and now I'm going to take the caulk and go around the edge like I said, You don't need a whole lot All right And then we're going to clean up the access I would wax do your final waxing after you put your caulk down because the caulk won't dry if it's waxed beforehand i found out the hard way it took like five days for caulk to dry where whereas normally it would only take about 15 minutes clay would be better for this but uh i'm gonna use what i got small bead of caulk all the way around the boat i wiped up all the access i could you know and then we'll just wax right over that uh, that way the the resin don't fall in that crack and potentially lock your boat into the the whole mold once you once you start the mold making process you don't want it to be locked in so you got to make sure the whole seam is uh, filled in, filled in pretty good. I recommend if you're gonna make a, a fiberglass mold that you make your lip maybe uh, two and a half inches may be good. Mine's only about an inch and a quarter. So um, it would have gave me more room to work with. So uh, yeah, just something for you guys to look out for if you're, uh, if you're doing your own mold. All right, so uh, we're gonna come back tomorrow when all this is fully cured out and then we're going to go at it with the wax I'm, I'll probably use um, well I got it down to a, a thousand grit all the way around the boat and on my my mold lip because it was some uh, race and low spots so I filled in some of my my low spots with filler a thousand grit all over I'm going to use this turtle wax rubbing compound you know for my first my first couple of waxings and that'll get any like surface imperfections out i've actually got just a tad of wood showing through right here that'll fill in some of those wood wood grooves and um and then we'll go through with like a, a carnauba style wax and wax it about 10 times apply the pva and then the gel coat and then the fiberglass so. the next day the caulk's all dried up. I'm going to take this um, hatch backer off the boat. Hopefully everything's dried up and cured out nicely. <clears throat> Probably going to have to caulk this again. And wait another day for it to dry. nice so it's all set it's all set glued into place so now we got to fill in these holes 
so no resin gets behind them and I'm gonna go ahead and trim up this access caulk and recaulk the, the hatch area all right start uh, using my rubbing compound and uh, get everything polished up and then we're going to wax it. All right, so it's, uh, it's been sitting up, got the halogen light on it, it's warm. Uh, it's time to spray the PVA, polyvinyl alcohol. This is what actually aids in the release of your boat. You, really, you need polyvinyl alcohol and some kind of good Carnuba release uh, wax. Wax it first, PVA it, and then gel coat it. So I'm gonna use this gun right here I'm actually going to use this spray gun right here it's a cheap Harbor Freight uh, like a touch-up type gun and it works really good so um, you know 25 PSI and we're just gonna coat the whole boat like just like we did wax in it I'm literally gonna do 20 coats on this thing <laughs> I did 20 coats or so on the first part and it peeled off perfect so I recommend if you try to make a mold coat it coat it with that PVA so yeah I'm gonna start spraying Yeah, that the, the halogen light is really speeding up the process. I wish I, I would have used that light last time. There's one little bad spot. See right there? It's like the it's not accepting the PVA, that little spot right there. And it's the only spot on this whole oh maybe one small one right there. That's why you go thin. Thinner the coats that you know the least amount of bad spots you'll have. <clears throat> so I'm on like coat four or five right now. And I'm about to do one more. That little bad spot filled in. It ended up filling in pretty good. Still kind of trying to come back through. I laid down two heavy coats that time, maybe even three. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I'm gonna put about three more on. So that would be like 10 coats. Right, so it's all dried out. Got about 10 or 11 coats on there. It's the next day. Everything's cured up. I'm just going to kind of wipe off the dust. I actually lightly hit it with like some 2000 grit just to knock off some of the little bugs that got stuck on there and uh, overnight. And uh, some of the dust from the fans, you know, where it settled. I just kind of knocked it off very lightly. Um, I'm going to start applying the tooling gel coat with an MEKP hardener. This stuff has a shelf life, so just get what you need for your for your proje project and uh, don't buy like a big bulk of it because it does go bad over time. I'm gonna start putting the, the gel coat on. We've, we've got it waxed, PVA'd, and now the gel coat. All right, the gel coat goes down and then we'll start laminating our uh, fiberglass layers. So uh, when you apply the gel coat, I like to cut my chip brush in half cut half the bristles off that stuff's really thick so you'll get a better coverage and it's faster to work with if you cut your bristles
Got our first layer of gel coat on. Well, actually it should be the only layer of gel coat. Um, some, some guys have heard that they use two coats of tooling gel coat when they're pulling molds, but that's usually for a bigger projects. So this boat, it should be good, it should be good. All right, so the boat's all cured out, the gel coat's cure. All right, I actually put an, an, a couple of uh, touch-ups on it in between takes here. So I'm going to start with the veil. This is surfacing veil. It's very thin, very thin fabric-like uh, fiberglass mat that you put on first. It kind of kind of helps with rounding off the corners when you go with your heavier mats. It also helps with the finish of the boat. Sometimes the, the fibers from a thicker fiberglass mat will show through, you know, on your first application. So you use the veil so you don't have any imperfections in the final product. It's all cured out the veil two three layers of veil on here two and a half layers uh, I use scraps around the edges on these hard edges right here to round them off now I'm gonna start laying down the chop strand And I'm ready. I'm ready to do it. So two, 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 two and a half, three coats of veil, three coats of chopped strand. She's ready to be pulled out. I got a couple little corner right here. I got my knife in the corners, and I'm just gonna kind of pry up all the way around it, just like I did the first one. I'm gonna put my sticks in and cross my fingers that nothing chips, breaks, or the plug actually sticks to the to the mold. So. So uh, here we go, here goes nothing, here goes nothing. wanting to stick it looks like oh all right <laughs> yeah here it comes oh yes nice nice the mold the plug didn't get messed up and the mold come out nice good deal oh there's one bad spot where I actually tore the the PVA, whenever I was brushing the PVA on, that the PVA is this thin, right, this thin coat right here. See that? That's the PVA. The more PVA you put on it, the better it's going to come off. All right. So I actually tore, you see that? I disrupted the PVA and I have one bad spot. Check it out. Oh my God, it looks so good. Oh, that one spot. Jeez, man, there's always one spot. 
Oh, it looks so good. Woo! <laughs> and this is the drill marks that I was talking about. That's why you put your drill marks in and it'll line up on the mold. See how it clicked right in? Clicked in. So those drill marks help you out on the end product. All right. Let's see how this come out. So all this will be cut out. You know, you'll cut this out for your hatch, hatch opening. Look at that. It come out good, you guys. Look at there. Oh, man. Next step, the boat. Huh? Next step is the boat. We're going to make this boat out of it. I mean, it's not the coolest looking boat in the world. It's not like huge or nothing, but I think it's going to be a fun little boat. See how the caulk, see how the caulk just comes right off? You just rub that caulk off. And you basically do the same thing with with the glue. A bit of alcohol and those hot glue places scraped right up like like it was nothing, you know, rubbing alcohol. But it turned out nice. Get you guys a close up here before we go. That's my bad one bad spot. This will be cut out for my hatch. And one more little place right there. I don't know what happened there, but the edges are nice and crisp. No bad spots there. All the way around it. This one has a couple little bad spots around the edge where it broke off. But what you do with that, you just take a little bit of fiberglass. And I got, I got these little drippers that I use. I'll, I'll dip it, I'll dip this in fiberglass, uh, resin. I'll dip that in resin. All right, and then I'll I'll drop little teeny tiny drops of fiberglass on those little chip marks. Really, a couple. It's only a couple. Just kind of drop it on those chip marks, and it'll fill in those holes. You kind of wet sand it, sand it out, so no glass gets hung up in there. But um, but yeah, yeah. And the more the more practice you get with this, the better you get at it. You know, it's uh, it don't come to you right off the bat. You know, it really don't. Get this PVA off of here. Just like really, you can wash it off once it's all cured out. I'm not ready to put water on it yet. I'm gonna cut the sides, the bad spots off, the edges, and uh, get it prepped up. But little dimples we made with the drill. A couple of them cracked, but that's all right. And then lines right up. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. With Big B with Ironclad RC, channel where we tinker, test, and tune everything RC. Yeah, we're ready to make a boat now, y'all. We're ready to make a boat now.